Dear friends, Jabim Namapathai, today I am going to read the third sublime virtue and the fourth sublime virtues that is Mudit and Upekha. I am reading from this book, The Way to Nibban. It is by Venerable Narak Thera. This book is published by Buddhist Cultural Center, Sri Lanka. I have already read about Karuna Compassion and Metta that is loving kindness now let us start the fourth virtue the fourth way to become and to to to, to attain nibban or nirvan in sanskrit as it's called mudit or mudita the third sublime virtue is mudit it is not mere sympathy but sympathetic or appreciative joy which tends to destroy jealousy its direct enemy one devastating force that endangers ho- our whole constitution is jealousy. Very often, some cannot bear to see or hear the successful achievement of others. They rejoice over their failures but cannot tolerate their success. Instead of praising and congratulating the successful, they try to ruin, condemn, and vilify them. In one way, Mudit is concerned over more with oneself. In one way, Mudit is concerned more with oneself than with others, as it tends to eradicate jealousy, which ruins oneself. On the other hand, it aids others as well, since one who practices Mudit will not try to hinder the progress and welfare of others. As it is with loving kindness, it is easy to rejoice over the success of one's near and dear ones, but rather difficult to do so over the success of one's adversaries. Yes, the majority do not find it difficult. Yes, the majority not only find it difficult but also do not and cannot rejoice. They seek delight in creating very possible obstacle so as to ruin their adversaries. They even go to the extent of poisoning, crucifying and assassinating the good. Sukrats was poisoned, Christ was crucified, Gandhi was shot. Such is the nature of the wicked and deluded world. The practice of metta and karuna is easier than the practice of mudita, which demands great personal effort and strong willpower. Do the western nations rejoice over the prosperity of the eastern and the eastern over the prosperity of the western? Does one nation rejoice over the welfare of another nation? Is one race happy over the growing prosperity of another race? Does even one religious sect which stands for the cultivation of morals rejoice over the spiritual influence of another sect? One religion is jealous of another religion. One part of the globe is jealous of another part of the globe. One institution is jealous of another institution. One business firm is jealous of another business firm. One family is jealous of another family. Unsuccessful pupils are jealous of successful pupils. Sometimes even one brother or sister is jealous of another brother or sister. (coughs) This is the very reason why individuals and groups should practice sympathetic joy if they wish to sublimate themselves and be internally happy. The chief characteristic of Modit is happy acquiescence in others' prosperity and success. Laughter and the like are not the characteristics of Modit as exhilaration is regarded as its indirect enemy. Modit embraces all prosperous beings and is the congratulatory attitude of a person. It tends to eliminate any dislike towards a successful person.
Now I will read Upekha. In Sanskrit it is called as Upeksha, but I am not sure. Let us read it as only Upekha. The fourth sublime state is the most difficult and the most essential. It is Upekha or equanimity. The etymological meaning of the term Upekha is discerning rightly, viewing justly and looking impartially that is without attachment or aversion without favor or disfavor please listen this once again the etymological meaning of the term upekha is discerning rightly viewing justly or looking impartially that is without attachment or aversion without favor or disfavor equanimity is necessary especially for laymen who have to live in an ill ill balanced world amidst fluctuating circumstances sights and insults are the common lot of mankind the world is so constituted that the good and the virtuous are often subjected to unjust criticism and attack it is heroic to maintain a balanced mind in such circumstances loss and gain fame and infamy praise and blame pain and happiness are eight worldly conditions that affect all humanity i would repeat this again loss and gain fame and infamy praise and blame pain and happiness are eight worldly conditions that affect all humanity most people are perturbed or disturbed when affected by such favorable or unfavorable states one is elated when one is praised and depressed when blame and when blamed and revealed he is wise says the buddha who admitted such vicissitudes of life stand unmoved like unto a firm rock exercising perfect equanimity the buddha's exemplary life offers us world rings an excellent example of equanimity there was no religious teacher in the world who was so severely criticized attacked insulted and revealed as the buddha and yet none so highly praised honored and reversed as the buddha once he went in quest for alms he was called an outcast or untouchable by an impertinent brahmin he became endured he he calmly endured the insult and explained to him that it is not birth that makes one an outcast but an ignoble ignoble character the brahmin was converted inviting him to a house for alms a certain man entertained the buddh with the filthiest language current in his time he he was called swine brute ox etc but he was not offended he did not retaliate calmly he questioned his host what he would do when guests visited his house he replied that he would prepare a feast to entertain them well what would you do if they did not partake of it questioned the buddh in that case we ourselves would partake of the feast well good brother you have invited me to your house for alms you have entertained me with a torrent of abuse i do not accept it please take it back calmly replied the buddh the offender's character was completely transformed retaliate not be silent as a crack gone when you are abused by others if you do so i deem that you have already attained nibban although you have not realized nibban such is the advice of buddh these are golden words that should be given heed 
to in this ill disciplined world of today once a lady of the court induced some drunkards to reveal the buddh so much that venerable anand his attendant disciple implored the buddh to leave the city and go elsewhere but the buddh was unperturbed another woman finished pregnancy and publicly accused the buddh of having placed her in that condition a woman was killed by his rivals and the buddh was accused of murder his own cousin and disciple devdatt made an unsuccessful attempt to crush him to death by hurling a rock from a cliff some of his own disciples accused him of jealousy partiality favoritism etc on the other hand many sang the praise of the buddh king prostrated themselves before his feet and explained the highest reverence like the mother earth the buddh suffered everything in silence with perfect equanimity like a lion that does not tremble at every sound one should not be perturbed or disturbed by the poisoned darts of uncurbed uncurbed tongues like the wind that does not clinch to the meshes of a net one should not be attached to the illusory pleasures of this changing world like the lotus that is unsoiled by the mud from which it springs one should live unaffected by worldly temptations ever calm serene and peaceful matter embraces all beings karuna embraces sufferers mudit embraces the prosperous and upekha embraces the good and the bad the love the loved and the unloved the pleasant and the unpleasant he who wishes to be divine in this life itself may daily cultivate these four sublime virtues which are dominant in all he who wishes to perfect himself and compassionately work for the welfare of all beings in the course of his countless births in sansar may sternly develop the ten perfection or parami and ultimately become some buddha some buddha is supremely enlightened one he who wishes to eradicate his passions and put an end to suffering by realizing nibbana at the earliest possible opportunity may diligently follow the unique noble eightfold path which still exist in its pristine purity the buddha exhorts suppose o monk this mighty earth were one mass of water and a man were to throw down there on a yoke with one hole then comes a wind from the east and wafts it west and a wind from the west and wafts it east a north wind wafts it south and a south wind wafts it north then once at the end of a hundred years a turtle blind in one eye pushed his neck through that yoke with one hole when he popped up to the surface at the end of a hundred years it is difficult lord that the turtle would do that said the monks it is just as difficult o monks that one will get birth in human form just as difficult that a tathagat should arise in the world an arhat a fully enlightened one just as difficult that the norm or dham and disciple or vinaya proclaimed by tathagat should be shown in the world but now indeed o monk the state of human birth is one and a tathagat has arisen in the world and the norm and discipline proclaimed by tathagat is shown in the world wherefore o monks 
ye must make an effort to realize this is ill this is the cause of ill this is the cessation of ill this is the way leading to the cessation of ill what he is telling this about the nibbana so we will continue with the nibbana concept of nibbana in buddhism we would start morality then we will do the way to nibbana that meditation part so see you in the next video thanks a lot jai bhim namo buddhaya